when you sear your conscience. So to sear is to, what's the purpose of searing the meat? You know? Why do we do it? Flavor. What's that? Flavor. Yeah. It locks in the flavor. It also locks in the heat. So you sear the meat on both sides, and then it like creates like this coating to it, and it allows the meat inside to cook, but it also keeps all the juices inside the meat. So it also stops it from drying out while you're cooking it. That's why we sear it. Um, it stops things from getting in. It also stops things from getting out. And sometimes you can sear your conscience, or you can sear your, your honesty. In other words, you get so used to lying, that lying is just kind of like the thing that you do. You sear your conscience. You're, you're unable to, t to, to even to, to self-criticize, and you're unable to, um, to, to self-examine, because you've like burned the outside of yourself. You can't take anything in, and the stuff that's inside is trapped. You can't, you can't get it out, if that makes sense. And so, when, when Wolf is saying this, um, she's saying that if you don't have, you know, that, that it's, well, first off, you're going to notice that there's no judgment there. She's not saying, you can't even tell the truth about, you know, she's not swaying her head around saying, you know, you can't tell the truth about yourself, so don't tell the truth about others. No, no, no. It's kind of like, like what Peterson is saying. Is Peterson saying that you shouldn't change the world? No, no. He's saying, what, what should you do? The first step is change yourself. Yeah, first step is fix yourself. And once you fix yourself, then you're going to be in a position to change the world. But the first thing is first, you have to fix yourself first. Too often we kind of like jump past that first step. It's kind of like I, I tell my students all the time, they ask me for, for some piece of life advice. My best advice I can give you in life is this, clean your room. Clean your room. And then once you clean your room, keep it clean. Because if you, that, that's the one thing in your life that you have complete control over. And if you don't have a room, fine, clean your backpack. Clean your folders. You keep them clean. That's hard to do. It's easy to sit there one day and organize everything and sit back and go, ah, everything's organized now. My backpack is clean. My room is clean. It's difficult to, to keep it clean because tomorrow it's like we're in a hurry. The bell rang. Oh, shoot. Just throw the papers in the back. Oh, I'll do it later. And then you find yourself a few days later with a messy notebook. Or you get home and you, you, know, you, you just crash on your bed and you, you know, throw your shoes or whatever. You know, it's like, oh, I'll pick them up later. Keeping your room clean is very difficult to do, as simple as it sounds. And as simple as it sounds, it's interesting that people who can't keep their rooms clean instead will turn and try to change the world. That's a very simple thing, keeping your room clean. As difficult as it is, it's still a, very, a relatively simple thing. Much more simple than to try to change the structures of the world, to change the political and economic structures of the world. Whenever I see a protest, for some reason, I always think to myself, I wish I could go to their houses while they're here and look at their rooms. I wonder if their room is, is clean or if their room is a mess. While they're out here trying to clean up the world, I wonder what their personal world looks like. It's like if you hire an accountant. Wouldn't you be a little alarmed if you, if you found out that your accountant had filed for bankruptcy three times? Yeah, I hope for that should, you know? You ever go to a, a personal trainer who looks like, like they shouldn't be a personal trainer? <laughs> you know? Yeah, you, you, like, uh, yeah I'll, I'll just leave it at that. I think we all can, can understand that. Um, it'd be, it's a strange thing when you look at people trying to clean up the world, but they can't clean their room. So maybe the first thing is first, clean up your room, keep it clean, now clean your house. And now start thinking about all of the things that start going through our head when we think about cleaning our house. Well, no, because my mom is a slob. So if I clean up, she's just going to make it a mess again. Well, what do you think is going to happen to the world? When you go clean up the world, do you think that you're going to go out there, clean up the world, and the world's going to go, wonderful, so now that it's in great order, let's keep it this way. Well, no, it's going to be an ongoing process. And so as difficult as it might be to keep your house clean, because you have family members over there who might not respect the work that you're doing, it's still, as difficult as that is, it's still easier than cleaning up the world. So maybe first things first, clean your room, then clean your house. Once that's clean, now maybe you start to look to your community. See how you can make a difference in your in your immediate community because that's the thing that's going to change change you the most, or right? going to impact you the most. It isn't so much what the state of the economy of France is that's going to help you to, to live a meaningful life. It's the stuff immediately around you. And then if you get diverted at some point, you have a family. Well, now you get to take care of the family before you take care of all of these other things. But this is kind of like what Peterson's getting at. It's so much more gratifying to just say. No, I don't want to have to deal with these things for myself. It's a lot more interesting and exciting to deal with the things out there. But just understand that you're, you're jumping over a bunch of steps. And none of those steps that you're jumping over are going to forgive you. 
Those are all there not to tell you to shut up. Those steps are all there to make you better, to make you stronger, so that when you encounter that kind of resistance about trying to change things in the world, that you at least have some, some ability to, to handle it. It's kind of like the steps of uh, dealing with a snake. See a picture, see a video, see, have it in the room with you before you finally handle it. All of those are necessary steps. You can't just walk into somebody who has a fear of serpents and just you know, throw a cobra at them. You know? um, instead, you have to you know, acclimate them. The same is true about making yourself better and stronger. It's a hard thing to do because none of us wants to deal with all those small things. You know, it's kind of like um, if anybody in here has ever tried, like, I don't know, like dieting or something like that. I mean, I don't know about you, but it gets frustrating sometimes you'll hear people say things like, you know, that person's losing a lot of weight. They're losing, you know, a pound a week. And you might be like, a pound a week? I gotta lose 30. That's 30. Dude, that's almost a year, dude. Just to get down to, and, that, and that's like a year of everyday dieting and exercising and doing all that. Who wants to do all that? Isn't there like a fast way to do it? Yeah, there are fast ways to do it. Um, I can show you how. Um, like in my gym sometimes, you know, people have fights coming up and it's like, I'm um, fighting in three days, I have to lose 18 pounds. Can you lose 18 pounds in, in three days? Yeah. yeah, I can show you how. I can show you how. You can do it. It's possible. You're not going to be, you're, you're going to be a little, you won't be yourself. So the important thing there is to be able to tell the truth about yourself, because if you tell, because if you do, you can tell the truth about yourself, now you can tell the truth about other people. And so first things first, it isn't again, it's not just don't tell the truth about other people. Now what it means to tell the truth is I don't know, that's where we get kind of caught up on the wisdom thing. Do you have to tell all of the truth? You know, do you have to tell the truth that you're not asked for? You know, but the important thing is that first step to be able to tell the truth about yourself. Because if you don't tell the truth about yourself, you can't know yourself. But, um, sorry, I'm still learning names. But as you were saying, if you, if now if you, if, you, if you continuously tell lies, that becomes your worldview. You start believing your own lies. You start believing your own, 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 your, own, your own garbage. And then once you start to believe the lies that you're telling, that now shades your perspective, and you're going to start seeing the world this way. Which means you're going to always see it through this thick layer of personality. You know, um... So again, make more sense in the fourth quarter. But um, very quickly, you have. Anybody know what that is? What is it? A bird? No. Oh my god, what's wrong with you guys? Can't you tell that? That's very obviously an eyeball. <laughs> These are terrible. <laughs> um, uh, maybe I drew a face in there, it might make more sense. That makes it worse. Okay, well just trust me, it's an eyeball. <laughs> I am not an artist. Oh, it's this thing. Yeah, it's like a nose, and I guess he has no mouth. And he's got a huge eye. And that, he started to have a, a head, but now he doesn't. <laughs> Went away. Anyway, so just trust me, it's an eyeball. So there's like some object in the world, a person. Now, light bounces off of that person, it then comes to you, you perceive it, it goes from your eyeball up into your brain, it goes first into your amygdala, you get that it, it processes the emotional level. Finally, after a while, it ends up in your cortex, and then that's when you kind of start to make sense of it. But see how many steps there are before it gets there. It happens almost instantaneously. There's something else that I can kind of plug in here, and I'm going to call that just personality. Um, it actually is happening up in your brain, but let's just say it's happening out there, which means that when you, when, when you see this, what it ends up actually looking like after you perceive it, after you, know, after you interpret it, is maybe something like that. So then it goes up into your brain, it's got a mixture of these two things. And that's because you're not seeing the world the way that it is, you're seeing the world the way that you are. And so you, you see it through this, through this lens of, of interpretations. And so um, when that happens now, you're not, again, you're, that will not shape how you see the world and how you see things. The more that you do this like intentionally, so the, the goal at some point is to try to get some of this broken down. Probably never all of it entirely, but to try and get as much of it broken down as possible so that you can see the world as much as possible the way that it really is. Because then that way you're living on the actual timeline, if you remember this, not the diverted timeline of, of some other alternate reality. So instead you're going to see things hopefully more clearly.
the way that they really are. Um, that's the goal, anyway, because then we can live on something that's real. And so the first thing to do is to tell the truth about yourself so that you can see this more clearly the way that it really is. Not to sear your conscience, not to sear your mind, but to keep it open. That's the fast version. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms.